of 19th April, I was in the Mutiana municipality, that's Mutiana district, at my home, known as Busobolongo. And on that day, I want to let you know that I kept home the whole day. Though previously, I'd bought some food stuffs, and that was rice and sugar. I did that while having it in mind that my people in Mitana municipality, my constituents, are really starving because they kept on coming to my gate, especially mothers and their children, and obviously men. And these people are genuinely starving and they did not have anything to eat at home. So being a charitable leader, and I'm actually known about that in Michiana municipality, and my family, even before I was born, my family used to do that. So I thought that it was prudent to really care about my people, but also to put in mind that I have to obey the regulations of public health. I really did everything having that in mind because I knew that if I do not, really I would be putting my people at risk. Since I, I love Mitiana people, I love them so much, there's no way how I would see any kind of victim of the COVID-19 problem we have in the world. Friends, I want to let you know that I packed those foodstuffs on that day of 19th with some of my household workers. Yeah, they took me pictures with them within my compound, as I've told you. I never went out of my compound that very day of 19th of April 2020. After packing those foodstuffs, one of my household workers called some of our border border riders who participated in the distribution of those foodstuffs. But I really want them to make sure that they do not gather people. I told them to do it house per house. And I know those people being part of my coordinators, I'm sure they will not disobey me. And when they did that, they were able to send me a few pictures on my phone by 2 p.m. I was having those pictures, I really looked at them and they really obeyed what I told them. I want to let that I posted those pictures on my social, all my social media pages, I posted those pictures. Reason being, I wanted to demonstrate that as a leader, I can really help my people without thieving from the poor. Remember, I'd written a letter to Parliament to make sure that they do not put 20 million Ugandan shillings on my account, of which they put a stamp on my letter later on. And I'm sure they never did, at least because I talked to the Speaker. The pre previously on uh, on Friday, yeah, before the day of 19th. I want to let you know that uh, that day I felt so happy that I had given out to some of my people, especially my immediate neighbors in Husaburongo. I gave them something. I feel so happy whenever I give out because really I think my family is made for that. Because for us, we believe in sharing the little we have. Comrades, at around 7 p.m., while I was in my bedroom, I had patrol cars coming to our place. I was informed that these people jumped over the fence 
of my house. There were so many that no one was able to count them because they came with several cars. And these people included police, policemen, they included the military, the UPDF, and the people who were not in uniform. As I was in my bedroom, I had bangs of doors, I had voices, I had that kind of uh, shouting. I was able to put on my clothes since that I was in my bedroom and I was having a shower. As I was like get, putting on my clothes, actually getting done, I had a very huge bang on my bedroom door. And that was the Arab Sea of Mediana in my bedroom. I really saw a very big crack on my bedroom door. I was very, very surprised to see Arab Sea doing such a thing. Just even before I would ask him anything, he held me by my trousers violently. I really asked him, really? Mr. Kagarula Bob, why are you handling me in this manner? What have I done? He silenced me by putting handcuffs on, on my hands. I was like, but I'm not violent in any way. Please, do not hold my trousers like that. Well, I'm not a chicken thief. It was like, don't tell me anything. For your own information, I'm a PhD holder. For you just studied from a very cheap university and you know nothing. I felt so bad seeing so many soldiers in my house turning everything of mine in the house upside down. I asked after seeing the deep still also in the house because I know him by the names of Alex Muine Mukono. Asked him now, do you people have a such warrant to do such a thing in my house while I'm on handcuffs? They're like, we do not need that. I was like, did you inform parliament about what you're doing right now? We do not need all that. They started pushing me with their guns out of my house. Getting out, I saw very many soldiers in my compound. I have a very huge compound at home. And these people were really so harsh, speaking with arrogance. I really smiled and laughed, like this is unbelievable. How, how can you behave like this? They're like, so, Zaki, you're trying to resist arrest? I was like, come on, Anna. I cannot see my people starving, yet I, I need these people, and these people really need me, and they love me so much. I got into the car. All that was captured, and I know it was in the public domain. I'm very sure. They put me in their double cabin car with several other Police trucks I saw. I want to remind you that in my in my house I had a tune of fifteen million Ugandan shillings, which was taken by those people, informed to me by my wife that these people after taking me to police, they came back still and they messed up the whole house. The bed, the bedroom, where the money was, the phone, and also the whole of the sitting room, everything was messed up. And they were telling everyone as they were looking for food. Disappointingly, they didn't find anything. But I'm wondering why they took that money. Reaching at the police station of Mitiana in the compound, well, still at, with handcuffs on my hands, 
because I was seated in between the Arab, the Arab PC, Bob, the, 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 the Arab PC is called Muine Alex, the Arab PC is called uh, Kagalula Bob, yes. Then the DPC sat in front, and that is the Bob, that is the Muine Alex Mukono. So for me, I sat in between another person who was not in uniform, and then the Arab PC. Before I reached the police station, I remember very well those people telling me, now we have you in our hands, and there is nothing now you can do. We are going to really show you something you've never experienced in my life. Really, I never believed that at first. But later on, I really faced whatever they told me. So, at the police station, they just dragged me out of the car, up to their offices. And that office belonged to the DPC. Reaching that office, as they began with the beatings in the car, that's what they did immediately reaching the office of the DPC, Metiana. They kicked me, slapped me, punched me by people who were in, in, in uniform, and some of them were not in uniform who were doing that. But all the beatings were initiated by the RPC. Kagadula Bob and also she punched me on my mouth and the, I started breathing right away and also Mr. Muine Mukono he kicked me and I had to fall down still while I'm handicapped in his office. They told me that how can how can a useless person like you who cannot even be a class monitor, a later a member of parliament, think that you can really fight President Museveni. Comrades, I want to assure you that there was nothing which these officers in within their offices talked about distributing foodstuffs. They never talked about that within that office. As I was asking them why all, all that was done to me, that really was boosting the beatings, the kicks, the punches, the slaps by the different people whom I did not know, but at least I knew those two, the RPC and the DPC. These people bundled me up put me into the cell of Mitiana police station. Reaching that cell, I realized that the cell was so tiny and dark. It had over 20 people. But reaching that cell, I realized there was a woman. And I was very surprised to see a woman with men in the same cell. I picked interest in her. She really narrated her order to me, did these other men in the cell. I realized that these people were there for over three weeks straight on maize seeds for all that time. This people informed me how most of them were HIV positive, but they were never given medicine, the ARVs. Really, that annoyed me so much. But I was like, you guys, keep calm. I think when I'm out of here, since I'm your leader, I'll be able to at least talk about these things. That was within, like, I think, 20 to 30 minutes, if I can remember so well. This, these people came back to the door of that cell. They requested me, they were barking at me. Zake, come out. I was trying to come, 
these other people in the cell started shouting on top of their voices, Tuli nawe, tuli nawe, tuli nawe. People power, people power. I think this annoyed the officers. And I saw the DPC there, the RPC, and many other soldiers, all officers. They tear gassed that small cell. It was tear gassed. Everyone was groaning in the cell, trying to shed tears in the cell, including myself. They were able to pick me up amongst the many, dragged me, kicked me, did all sorts of things, and took me to the waiting many patrol cars in the compound. Reaching there, I vividly saw, I, I vividly I vividly saw the RPC telling the officers, please, and he said that in Runyankole, please make sure, make sure he does not see. They got some small bottles I was seeing, they put them direct in my eyes for some time till when I would hear him shaking, I would hear the person shaking and putting and then put another down, I had it being dropped and then put another one in my eyes. I thought maybe it is pepper spray because it was really so painful, so itching. I cried a lot, I shouted. I was like, please forgive me, please forgive me. They would not hear, they would not really listen to me. I thought maybe it is pepper spray and thought maybe after some time I would see again. But comrades, up to now, I can hardly see. Though the doctors, the opticians, they are trying to work upon this, that's why I'm having these glasses to come to the light. They tied me. They put two handcuffs, and uh, two handcuffs this side to make it fall on my body's parts. It was very also painful. They tied me with ropes, and they joined both ends of the ropes to put me behind the police truck, there is that back side of the truck, or the police truck of the double cabin, where the policemen sit, but there is that space in between. It is actually triangular, triangular in nature. They made sure that I was suspended and hanged without actually leaning against both ends of the metals and also not touching down the metallic ground of that truck. And that was done with insults, abusing me, how I'm very dense, how I should thank President Museven for making a, a useless person like me, a member of parliament, that I should be appreciative of him. So many other insults were told to me. I had several cars starting. I think they were over four, if I'm not mistaken. They drove me at a very terrible speed. We never would come across the, the road bumps. My body would swing on the sides of the metals. It was so hurting. And whenever they reached the potholes, I would I would slightly like get up and down while my back, since I was facing up while my back was really touching the metallic floor of the truck, it was so painful. Countrymen and women, I've never felt that pain before in my life. I groaned, 
I asked for help. These people were only inflicting more pain with sticks, with their guns, and their boots stepping on me. I felt so numb within my limbs, my legs, my hands. It was so painful, so much. I cried than ever before I've ever done. Not even the alua. Up to now, whenever I remember that pain, it really gets back to me. It was very painful, a lot. They took me for about two hours. Reached at the kit which I had. The guards opened so fast. Said, Who is that? One of the officers asked, It is this dog, Zake. I had thought that maybe this is the person I would be asking for help from because I asked him, Please help me. He really didn't. And I had a word in Lunyankole say, And a word in Lunyankole, something like, But it meant that you're now just fighting, but you'll soon defecate. Something like, was a nyampa and something like that. I was hearing something of that kind because I can listen to the language, though I cannot speak it. It was very disappointing because I had thought maybe I'd reached a police station where at least I'll be put in maybe in a place with dignity and not inflicting more pain. These people within the compound, while still on handcuffs, after untying me, they really forced me that I should walk. Something which I could not do, I fell down. They stopped on my head with their boots. Beating started from their compound. They put, they dragged me downstairs. The echoes I had made me feel that now this is a very huge building. They put me down on the floor. They began caning me so much while on being handy. And a few words were said, like ten percent in Luganda, and they were mocking me. They even reminded me one time a few weeks before we lost Ritanabu Kenya and Dan Shayune. That is okay, we had you crying out to the cat to the katikilo to tell the kabaka to say a word about the killings happening on Ugandas that so that they can stop at least within Uganda and other areas. So where is your kabaka here to help you? Where is your katikilo to help you? Well, this country does it belong to you, and you should know that it is high time you quit politics and but spend on other things. One man came and stepped so hard on my head, and he told me in Luganda to repeat after him as he was beginning to tell me those words which I should repeat after him. I started hesitating that caught more kicks on my lower back beside which still hurts up to now. I want to assure you that I was only fighting for my life. I had to say everything without telling me. Zake, Nangamagamba Zake, Okufanulu Alelo. Tituangela kudamu kukulaba, ngo wakanya, President, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, Yoweli Kaguta Museven, the Honorable, 
they told me never to also talk about and oppose the first lady, Janet Kataha Museveni, and also their most honorable son, Kanelugaba, the next president, and those are the words they were telling me to repeat after. Zake, Okubano Rwarero, Todanga Mukubango Wakanya, President Webuangalino, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Janet Kataha Museveni, Wamu, no HT when you can never Muhozi President Adako, never be Gambang and you get it. Never Gamba Zak and a two damu to cool it and go Gambang away in Banti Bob in Tunnel Bocha Gulani, President Adako. Again, I see Wulu Bulamu when say no, Kubanga Chinochita and the Kabuta and the sea to Genda Kukula Gako. Chiche tusobolo kukola, kubanga mwe, apaganda, temuli sobola wadoku fuga, keberu yona 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 yona. I want to tell you this has been my fourth time when I'm being tortured. It is my fourth time as a member of parliament being tortured. The first time I'd just come to parliament during the Tojikwata call, where I was tortured, you remember very well, where my head was hit. The second time, I remember all those times, actually I don't need to repeat all of them, even the one where they tiagas my house in Mitiana, still by the same DPC, Alex Mwene, who participated a lot in my beating. Still, from there, they called Honorable Chagulani still, also a dog. And one of them was mimicking him while speaking in some kind of mocking way. Mulu was a musobolo kufuga, mulu za mwina che musobolo kukola, mulu za mwina che musobolo kukola. Tugenda kukukola kukubanga teri muntu yena yena yena. Asobola kubanga ye kalakasa kuduro. No one will be, demo, will be demonstrating for you because we are running the show people under lockdown. We are the only ones running the show. No one will demonstrate for you. You'll be here and no one will come for your help. I felt so bad. All that happening, friends, these people got out of that building and I remember one person ran to me and I heard the voice saying Zake Tokaba Tokaba Nyomunange Binobia Twitter Mobuli Jo Zake do not cry. This is what we experience every day here. Because they had dropped me now in another place which felt like a cell. Zake Tokaba Binobia Twitter Mobuli Jo Napa Nebataniko Kubanga Baja Jendi Neba Gamba Zake this place is called same way and the torture is done from the basement. They informed me and they cried to me that Zaki for you a leader. I think you will not be kept here for so long like us. For us we've stayed here. Some of them they are telling me they were there for months, so many months, and others is for years well at that same way torture centre. They really requested me that I should really help them when I'm released, that I really expose whatever is happening in that place, that at least they be released, or at least they face the court and that serve in prison, even when they committed certain crimes. That took around something like 20 minutes or 30, these people came back.
they handcuffed me. They, I mean, they removed the handcuffs from my hands, and now they put them outside. They, they put them behind my back, and that is the so-called kandoya. They dragged me out. They put me back to the patrol. But this time, I was face. I was facing now down. I was facing down, not like the other time when I was coming from Etiana. Well, I was facing up. This time, I was facing down. Since that put my, they handcuffed me from behind. They still suspended me in air, like how they did it, from Mitiana. All that happening, they drove for some few minutes, and I, they reached some other place. They still untied me, got me off the truck, they dragged me, still with beatings, and everything, beating was just happening all the time. All the kind of beating you can think of to summarize everything because now I'm really getting tired. They put me under the floor, which was, I felt, cemented, but they poured a certain chemical on me which was which was very cold on my hands all over the body it made me feel so much pain so much pain it was very cold and i don't know it was meant for what purpose but as i would try to try to to to, to turn around i would feel that i was under a table on a cemented ground I shouted from there, I groaned in pain. They told me, do not shout. This is not your father's promises. Instead of concentrating to your father's business, who has become rich under the, this regime, you wouldn't be the person to actually oppose Mr. Museven. They told me so many insult friends, I can't remember. I, I, I really can remember everything, but I'm getting so tired to tell you each and everything they said, but so many insults and tribal statements, and I want to put it clear that in my whole life, I want to put it on record, I have, I have been one of the people who have been actually talking against tribalism and any kind of any kind of sectarianism. And I remember also the Honorable Chagulani as our leader institutionary within our ranks. He has always been against that. In in the morning within that other second place they made me join 